Hi, thanks so much for joining us. My name is Shannon. In our previous video, we were talking about how to do division, but today we're gonna look a little bit more of how to not just do division with a whole number divided by a fraction, but actually looking at a fraction divided by a fraction. When we were younger, we learned many different types of tips for this, and we're hoping in your classroom as you use this video, we can teach our students how to the, really the why before the how, not just show me the way to do it, just but why are we doing it that way and why does it make sense? So kind of going back to what we talked about with division, you know, we kind of look at the whole number that we have 30 divided by five. That really means how many groups of five are there in 30? When we look at 81 divided by nine, it really means how many nines are there in 81? If we can take the understanding of what we know from whole numbers and relate it to what we're doing with fractions, um, when we're doing it with um, division, it will make a lot more sense to students. So if I tried to look at this problem, one half divided by one sixth, we wanna be able to understand what is that asking? It's asking how many sixths are there in one half? We're gonna use these same pattern blocks we've been using in the previous videos to have a hexagon equal to a whole. Our trapezoid is going to equal one half. Our rhombus is one third and the triangle is gonna be equal to one sixth. These are very familiar manipulatives for students to use to demonstrate what we're doing. When we're trying to get this, we end up getting a whole number. So somebody might tell you to just flip it and then multiply. That will also get you the same answer as what we're going to show you here. But we want you to understand why that is. Why do, do you figure out and get a whole number when you flip it? You know, you're kind of asking how many sixths are fitting into a half. So we're gonna show our hexagon as our whole, just so you can see it in relationship to what we're talking about. Um, and so I'm gonna look at how many sixths are there in half. So I'm gonna show my half. And now the question is asking how many sixths? This here is my six. So if I started to look at how many of those fit? I know that one fits, two fits, three fits. So as I start to look at this concept, I'm not looking at this as just six. In this case, I'm actually looking at it as one sixth. So when I look at my half, I know that one, two, three, six fit inside of my half. I didn't need to flip anything or multiply to do this because I'm able to demonstrate it. We want students first to understand how to do it with division. Be sure before we learn any shortcuts that we really don't understand completely. Okay, let's try another problem. Let's try this one. Let's try to see if I were to put the problem up five, six divided by one third. Again, what is this asking? It's asking how many thirds are there in five, six. If you need to, you can always put the one hole on there and build it on top to see. So we first have to build what they're looking at and what they're looking at is they want to see how many thirds are there in five, six. So I'm first gonna build my five, six in relationship to the whole. So we all know we're looking at the same amount of pieces. So here I have an example of five, six. The question wants to know how many one thirds fit. Now this isn't gonna equal the same amount, it's not gonna equal just one you know, whole number because it looks like it's more. If it wanted to know six six, that would be easy because I could put that on top. But that's not the case of what it's asking. So how many groups of this one third will fit? We have one that will fit and then we have two that will fit. So I know that I can fit very nice and easily the two thirds, or, or I'm sorry, a third and a third. But here I'm left over with part of a third. The part of that is it's one half of what we're talking about here. So I know that if I'm looking at the pieces of the third fitting on top of the five six, if I built it, I have it, there's my one that fits, my other third that fits, and this represents half of this. It doesn't rep, It doesn't fill it the entire way. It only fills it half. That's why it's two and a half times. So I know that one third fits into five, six, two and a half times. These can become complicated quickly. So if you need to kind of work on manipulatives and getting different problems that might be using more simpler unit fractions, you could certainly do that and then kind of build up as we do it. We're gonna do one last challenge because sometimes it might not fit 
at least one time. So that's also another, you know, another possibility. So this wants to know how many halves fit into a third. Okay, so let me think about what I need to do. It wants me to look at how many halves will fit into a third. So I'm gonna take my whole and I'm gonna put this up. This might stretch your brain a little bit for some. Remember, this would be kind of our level one. We wanna start with kind of doing more of the, these examples until you feel comfortable moving on to these harder examples. So what is one half of, what, how many halves fit into one third? Well, I'm gonna go try to put this on top and guess what? If I looked at this, if I put the half underneath, it doesn't even go in one whole time. It's less than one whole. So how many times does it go in there? Well, I know that if I kind of divided this up, even if you had to see it this way visually, if I divided this up, we know that two thirds of this half fit. Okay, so if I'm looking at the one third and I wanna see it, obviously I might be laying it you know, on top and kind of looking below. I know that it doesn't completely fill even one time, but if I broke up the pieces, I know that there's one third, you know, one third fits here and then another third. So we know the answer to this is going to be two thirds of what? It's talking about the half, right? Two thirds of the half fit. And so being able to see this model helps us to kind of understand how in this case, where it might be a whole number plus some, this case is where it's less than a whole, that you can use these manipulatives to kind of help you to understand these. Most students find it first to kind of work through lots of problems using unit fractions that kind of go in nice and evenly, then kind of go to that next level where it might go evenly and then some more, right? And then we'll kind of go up to this harder complexity where it might go in less than a whole to understand it. Students modeling it to the pattern blocks really shows their understanding as they're doing it. You can also um, create your own problem. What's another problem that you could create using the fraction pieces that we use to come up with another division statement? You could certainly use these as we have them um, set up in the unit fractions. You also could make your hole a little bit larger where you use two hexagons, therefore four trapezoids would fit on top, so this would be worth fourths. You'd have, um, these are your, originally one, your one thirds, but now they're gonna be sixth for your rhombus. And then your triangle is gonna be able to fit 12. There's lots of other opportunities for you to do that. My challenge for you is to explain this in your classroom and help kids start to understand why we change this to multiplication is maybe a faster way of thinking about this, um, but that you truly can divide a fraction by a fraction with a concrete tool to help you to get your kids to understand how to do it. We hope you can use this video in your classroom as a lesson launch as you start to explore more in division of fractions. You also could use this in a flipped classroom style where students might listen to our video several times through, build it with maybe a peer, and then come to you in a guided math group so that you can kind of show them them a little bit more based on what their beginning knowledge of this concept is. We hope that you'll check out our website at SIS, the number four teachers, along with our YouTube channel for more tutorial videos to come into your classroom. Thanks so much for joining us.